Hello, it's Scott Manley here. One of the questions I frequently get asked, especially after I posted an episode of Deep Space Update, is what the heck is falling off those Chinese rockets? And the answer to this is actually quite simple. It, there are foam panels attached to the side of the rocket and they provide thermal insulation and they're designed to fall off as the rocket launches. China isn't the only country that does this. You can see these on Ariane rockets from Europe and some Indian rockets. But beyond this simple answer, I think there's actually a much larger story about insulation uh, that you know, might be worth talking about. If you go back to some of the most epic rocket footage ever, you've got the Saturn V, right? The Apollo missions lifting off and all those amazing you know, slow frame rate or high frame rate cameras giving you slow motion views of this epic rocket ascending off the pad. And you can see huge amounts of material cascading off the side. This is ice that has formed. So the Saturn V was fueled by kerosene, liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. And those extraordinarily cold propellants will make the outer surface of the rocket below the freezing point of water and that results in the air you know, freezing out its, its water, the humidity, onto the side of the rocket. And then when the countdown hits zero, those engines light up, the vibrations, the motion, the flexing of the vehicle causes that ice to fall off the side and cascade down. And it is some of the most glorious footage in rocketry. But actually, it's not a big deal. The ice falling off the side generally just fell down and you know, smashed to the ground. Now, the Saturn V liquid oxygen tanks, uh, like many other rockets, uh, the, the outer coating has no insulation on it. It's literally like a painted sheet of metal with the liquid oxygen on one side and the atmosphere on the other. And you just accept the fact that you're going to get water freezing to the outside. Now, the liquid hydrogen tank, on the other hand, is significantly colder. Liquid hydrogen has a boiling point of about 20 Kelvin. It's so cold that it isn't just the water from the atmosphere that freezes to the side of the tank. You actually have the air, the uh, nitrogen and the oxygen. Uh, they would condense on the side of the tank and then they would run down the side of it. And that instead of forming like an insulating layer with the water, that would actually take heat and transfer it into the tank and therefore accelerate the boiling of the hydrogen, which is why they absolutely needed to have insulation on that tank. So the Saturn V, it had uh, insulation. The early insulation they used was like a polyurethane foam with a fiberglass honeycomb matrix and then an impermeable layer on top of that. Towards the end of the Saturn V run, they switched this over to like a spray-on foam, again with the impermeable layer. The impermeable layer is important. There's a paper I found that pointed out it if damages and cracks form and air can get into this, then it starts to freeze and you start collecting liquid oxygen mixed with polyurethane foam. And if you hit that hard, it can catch fire or even explode, which is fun when you've got hydrogen on the other side. So anyway, with the Saturn V taking off and all that ice falling down the side, that wasn't a big deal. That was just a launch pad the ice was hitting. But after the Apollo program came the space shuttle program. And for that, if you had ice falling off the side of your propellant tank, you had the bottom of the space shuttle sitting right there. So they had to stop any ice freezing on that. That's why the space shuttle tank absolutely needed to be covered in a relatively thick, like one inch layer of polyurethane foam. Um, so this foam uh, they used was a spray on type foam. They developed it for Apollo and has an um, impermeable layer on top of it. Now we know it as this sort of familiar orange color, like a, which is also seen on the Delta IV, but um, actually when it's first applied, it's much closer to a light yellow in color and it sort of just turns that way over time as it, as it breaks down under sunlight. The earliest versions of the space shuttle, the first two launches, they actually covered this with white paint to protect it against the ultraviolet. But after enough experience, uh, they realized that this was just adding weight to the shuttle and not really helping you know, keep the foam intact in any more way. So yeah, that kind of foam has since been used on many more rockets. As I said, the Delta IV, it's used on SLS. Uh, it's also used on the Centaur upper stage uh, on the Atlas V and will be used on the, the, the Vulcan as well. Of course, the, the downside of this is that while ice is very bad for the shuttle, it turns out that once you get to supersonic speeds, the foam gets decelerated by the airflow if it breaks off. 
and that can damage the tiles. And we saw that on one mission where they almost lost it, and we definitely saw a big chunk fall off from the forward bipod and damage the wing that led to the Columbia disaster. So, you know, the, the insulation is incredibly important, uh, but unfortunately it, it also has been associated with various failures. My solution, by the way, is that they should have mounted the tank on the back of it and got rid of that big tailplane and put like little tailplanes on the side. That would have made far more sense, but hey, you know, we've moved on to other things since then. But anyway, my point about the foam falling off is that if it falls off once the vehicle is going very fast, then it gets entrained in these like supersonic airstreams and very quickly accelerates to high velocities relative to the rocket or the this vehicle and damages it. So this is why it's actually good to have your foam fall off very early in the flight. And for example, Ariane 5, that does that. Around the attachment points to its solid boosters, there are foam coverings that cover the, uh, the separation thrusters because you don't want to have the cold liquid hydrogen there causing any condensation or blockages in those thrusters, that could be a problem. Or having a chunk of ice build up that when the thrusters fire gets knocked into the side of the rocket and causes a loss of that. So there's this glorious photo by Trevor Malman showing these panels falling off the side of the Ariane 5 as it ascends. So, you know, you get the idea. If you look at this, you start to find these sort of features in many, many places. Uh, but by this point, many of you will say, well, wait a second, the Long March rockets you're pointing at, they don't actually use cryogenic propellants. Because, yeah, the first, you know, early Long March, one through four, they all use uh, nitrogen tetroxide and UDMH. These are hypergolic propellants. These are storable propellants that are liquid at room temperature. So you might naively think that controlling the temperature of the propellant isn't necessary. But... Actually, if you look at nitrogen tetroxide, or dinitrogen tetroxide as it's correctly called, it actually has a very narrow range, right? I think it freezes at minus 11 Celsius and it boils at 21 Celsius. Now you can put in some additives to extend this range a little, but beyond that, it also disassociates or decomposes. So dinitrogen tetroxide basically has a pair of oxygen, sorry, a pair of nitrogen and four uh, oxygens. And sometimes as it warms up, it splits into nitrogen dioxide. And by splitting up, it reduces the density and it changes the reaction. So ideally you wanna keep it at one temperature where your engines are all optimized. So you'll notice that for the Long March rockets, they use these panels at the inland launch sites where they have these old hypergolically fueled rockets and they will tend to only use them in the winter and I think that's to keep it warm enough so that the stuff doesn't actually solidify. On the other hand, the Ariane 1 through 4, it also had a similar sort of shroud, an insulation shroud that was attached around the second stage. Again, the first stage and the second stage of the Ariane 5 use um, hypergolic, you know, storable propellants. And the second stage, they would have this... Uh, shroud and as the rocket lifts off it would get pulled off by wires and the rocket would continue into space. Um, so I think in that case however that was used to keep the temperatures down to your know, functionally useful temperatures given that the launch site they were working from was very very close to the equator. Uh, the cryogenic third stage was also insulated but it actually kept its insulation attached throughout the flight. But now if we return back to historic American rockets if you look at the early Centaurs, they would have big foam panels attached around those to control the temperature of the liquid hydrogen and oxygen. And there's actually an incredibly famous rocket disaster that many people have seen though who have no interest in rockets, right? Atlas Centaur 1 was the very first test of the Centaur upper stage on Atlas. And um, the reason it's well known is it didn't work. It exploded in this you know, amazing fireball that was captured from every single angle. And many of those camera angles found their way into an art movie called Koyana Skatsi, which basically takes a lot of stock footage and pairs it with a soundtrack by Philip Glass. And I think it's amazing, but yeah, you do have some confusion at the end where a Saturn V turns into a, an Atlas Centaur. So anyway, in this case, what happened was the aerodynamic forces on those foam panels were, you know, greater than anticipated and they peeled off. 
very early in the flight, they were supposed to remain attached until it was above uh, 80 kilometers altitude. So the upper stage hydrogen tank starts getting heated, the hydrogen boils, temperature increases, and the stage explodes. And that ultimately led to the loss of the mission. And yeah, one of the great scenes in art movie history, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, finally, uh, I kind of want to give a shout out to the Minotaur rocket with its uh, banana peel. That's the only way I can describe it. So Minotaur is a launch system which is based on the Minuteman missile. You basically take the first couple of stages of a Minuteman and put some other rocket stages on top of it and you have a very cheap launch vehicle. So it's wrapped in this big yellow like fa banana fabric. At the it's lit it looks like a banana and it pulls off as the thing ascends very quickly. So the reason for this is that it's a solid rocket motor system that was designed to be deployed in missile silos with you know, temperature, climate control, because you want to make sure that you coddle your nuclear weapons so that they are comfortable and ready to go to war at the moment that they're needed. And so when they took the, they created the Minotaur rocket, this is launched from a pad which is outdoors, and the specifications for the first two stages require that they keep the temperature within these ranges because solid rocket motors, if they get warmer, the reaction rate actually increases. And if they get colder, the reaction rate decreases. So you get more thrust for less burn time or vice versa. This effect actually has to be taken account for the space shuttle solid rocket motors. And if you look at a lot of old launch plans, some they have maybe multiple uh, in multiple plans depending upon what they believe the SRB temperatures are because they have to model the performance of those solid motors based upon what they think the ambient temperature of the propellant is. So yeah, this is, you know, you start with a simple question and you end up finding all these little individual bits. Uh, <laughs> it turns out, by the way, that while all those panels falling off of Long March rockets are generally not a big problem, there is one case last year where a panel or foam fell off a rocket and it then got stuck on a grid fin and as the vehicle moved through supersonic speed to actually uh, it caused a deflection of the grid fin uh, which then caused the rocket to go off course and they lost the rocket. So yes, even the foam, uh, <laughs> even when you don't have a side attached payload, it's still something that can mess you up. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.